This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. On today's wild adventure, not only are we going to skateboard at a brand new park that we've never been to, but we're going to skate an Amazon setup, completely bought separate parts, put it together and see if it's actually a good board. On top of that, we're going to a vegan restaurant in the heart of Dallas, Texas, started by a world record tattoo artist. We're also checking out the Erie Art Deco Fairgrounds, a massive area with 50 unique decorated buildings built specifically for aesthetics only. We're gonna check it out. It's gonna be beautiful. GoPro audio wasn't working well, but what I was saying here was that you'd expect downtown Dallas to have some big elaborate concrete skate park, but they just have this. Welcome to East Dallas Skate Park, another prefab skate park. I know the chest GoPro piece looks uh, sick, but let's go through all the items we ordered on Amazon. First off, the wheels. Bandit, Bandit. They seem fine from what I look, they look very standard. I don't really have preferences with wheels as long as they don't flat spot immediately. I'm good with whatever. Amazingly enough, it also came with a tool, which is really sick actually, because I forgot mine. So that works out very nicely. The hardware is as standard as it could possibly be. Uh, it's gonna be strange because the actual tops of the screws are white, which is, uh, it's gonna stand out on the grip tape, but that's okay. As for the bearings, I obviously don't know until I test them out, but they are very standard, normal looking silver bearings. I usually wear the red ones, so they stand out a bit. These are gonna look like they're flush with my trucks. And that's cool. Does that make sense? No? Okay. Last but not least, the trucks. And from looking at the trucks, they feel a bit generic. They don't have any cool detail like Thunders and Independence, but if they can get the job done, then I will be happy. So CCS, you better pull through. Last but not least is the actual deck itself, and it doesn't feel fantastic, but it will do the job. It feels a little less hard than a normal skateboard, like it could break if I just landed on it wrong on a rail, but we're gonna see. At this park, we're gonna find out. It also came with a sheet of grip tape that I accidentally sort of hacked at the top. Uh, usually the grip tape that comes with skateboards like this are terrible, but this feels, doesn't feel great. It is sticking to the board. That is a very good start for Grip tape. How fast can I set up a board? Woof. Put 10 seconds on the clock. Let's go, dude. The skateboard is complete. And before we get into testing this, let's rate the Oh my God. Some of the grip tape came off just from throwing it on the ground like that, which is very abnormal, but yeah, let's let's rate the skate park. Let's talk about the normal things first. This little quarter pipe section is actually pretty nice. The mini ramp is wider than they normally are at prefab skate parks like this. So you have a lot of room to try to learn how to skate the mini ramp. It's got one of these classic middle areas that you find at parks like this a lot, but it is a little bit wider than usual and a four stair is a pretty unique facet of it. Also with this out ledge on the right, I'm kind of excited about trying to skate it and not get hurt. Depends how the board feels. And then you've got one of these standard benches, which I don't really see the point of these. And then of course you have the classic little ledges, but somebody else actually brought in a wooden ledge that looks Pretty fun to me. Not completely sure why this flat rail is missing the end, but you do have a flat rail. It's just, I guess it's pretty fragile. I really appreciate the ingenuity of this. This is three little ramps stacked on top of each other, but I think the locals put angle iron on the side. So it actually ended up being a very, very nice sized ledge that you can slide and grind. I really appreciate the effort behind this. And then you have one of the skinnier benches that they put on the side so you can do wallies over it, tricks over it, practice your height, and another one of those benches over there. But let's get into the two very weird obstacles here. Flat rail uno, look how strange this bar is. It curves in and then out. I think it's a really cool obstacle, but it is very unique for a skate park like this. And it doesn't look like it was built by the traditional prefab people. And then rail number two in the middle right here, it dips down so steep. So just imagining getting on the highest part, which is above my knee, and then hitting that steep bank on the grind seems so difficult, but maybe worth trying if we can get this board to work. Oh, also my initial rating of this part before actually skateboarding on it is a three out of 10. So let's see if that changes. I'm also skating a brand new pair of Braille shoes, all black, because they match the fit a bit better than the other colorways I have, but new shoes, new board. <laughs> We'll get 20 solid tricks with this board, but already everything is bad. It's not. Ooh.
So I cracked the board pretty much just getting into that lip slide earlier. So when I tried the one trick and bailed, which basically I couldn't do any trick because my feet were just sliding all over the place. So when I went to just stomp it and I broke the board, that was about one fourth of the pressure required to break a normal board. But I was just like, will it break if I just barely step on it? So boom, it broke. And I felt like it was going to. This thing is so fragile. This deck that I got was absolutely the worst part of the entire equation. Do not buy the deck that I bought. Oh my God, it's so, so bad. The second worst part about it was the bearings. They felt just like the normal Walmart, Amazon, terrible bearings. And the wheels themselves, I couldn't even tell if they were good or bad. It's just the bearings wouldn't even let them roll. So I never really got to try them out. The trucks actually felt okay. They're brand new. So clearly breaking in new trucks is always going to be kind of difficult, but I feel like they're fine. Like if I actually skated them for a while, I'd probably get used to them. And they grinded super well. On the first Smith grind, I slipped right out. Like my board was ready and willing to grind. By the way, the city of Dallas actually now has a $4 million budget for a concrete skate park coming hopefully within the next year. Clinton Haley, she said this is a prefab park. This is a style of park that was kind of in fashion 10 or more years ago. You can notice the rust on some of the surfaces. They're hot and you can imagine some of the edges eventually will become rough and be dangerous to skaters. Good on you Haley for recognizing. Also, the skate park does have four and a half stars. It has 200 reviews on Google and most of the people thoroughly enjoy the skate park. Anyways, I wanna get a real session in. I wanna put on some shoes that I'm actually more used to, not brand new ones, ones that are broken in, and maybe try to test out some of the stuff that's weird at the skate park. trick was going to be more scary than difficult and it ended up being more difficult than anything else but i am very glad it worked out it felt very satisfying oddly satisfying some might say maybe we can do a round two where i actually skate the other rail i ended up spending all the time on the weird kinked one that was super fun but what would i rate this park now after skating it originally it was a three now I'd say it was a four. I feel like it actually does have everything I need. I love how the ground is, and I do feel like you can just tinker here all day, and it's all the kind of obstacles I like besides a solid round rail, but it was fun. It was very, very fun. Okay, now let's go to the coolest vegan restaurant in Deep Elm, owned by a world record tattoo artist who actually had his own TV show called Ink Master. I've never seen it. It just sounds, I mean, that that's such a cool thing. Let's go. And before we embark on the rest of today's a glorious adventures, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. I get to live the life I want to live because of Squarespace. <laughs> Sounded like such an exaggeration, but I still remember when I first got into building a business and building a brand and how well building a website actually co coincides with that and the invigoration I felt when I had something that showcased the things that I did. So with Squarespace, there are a ton of templates you don't even have to try to be a good designer or anything. You can pick whatever they have. They're award-winning templates. They have customer service 24 seven. And if they aren't immediately available for chat, you can just send them an email and they will reply pretty much right away. It's such an easy service and anyone can get on and build a website pretty much right away. So if you wanna build an online store, if you wanna do a blog, if you wanna pretty much build your own social media as well, you can have a website that has comments, likes, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have to deal with the algorithm of social media. You can just build your own platform. So if you are in the creative sphere and you are excited about building a creative life and being able to kind of go and do the things that you love to do and figure out how to monetize it, building a website is an amazing place to start. So link in description down below if you wanna get 10% off your first purchase or domain or go to squarespace.com slash John 
hill check it out or you can just literally try it out for free you can go to the website and just do a trial run and when you're ready that's when you hit up the link you do the thing and i promise it is a very very good service that has serviced me very well over the long years i used them well before they sponsored me and it's been fantastic working with them so Check it out and enjoy the rest of this freaking video. So Tiki Loco is a vegan restaurant in Deep Ellum that serves tacos, nachos, etc. Just realizing it's also a coffee shop, which is going to be nice, but it was created because they didn't want to have a full sit down place. There's a dude in front of me peeing on the sidewalk. All right. I'm not typically this much of a fat ass, but I wanted to order three different things to see if it offered the, the goodness that people say online. So I got the peach mango smoothie. I got the pork tacos in quotations because it's all vegan and then the potatoes aka the side fries i'm also sitting in a very awkward place in the restaurant that i don't even know if customers are allowed but it's a good location to film kind of minus the lighting where do we even start okay uh the coffee let's let's do this this is number one i love coffee shops and this better live up to its expectations or i'll punch things like this wall oh my god could be a combination from uh coming down from the session without actually drinking water but that is refreshing. Number two, the peach drink. Is this going to be delicious? Let us find. <coughs> oh my dear Lord. Oh my dear, that is delicious. It barely tastes like peach. It tastes almost just like, like ice cream. Wow. We're saving the best for last, so gotta go in for the potatoes first, AKA home fries. They're always potatoes. Just say potatoes. We know what fries look like. Mm, it has a bit of a kick to it. It tastes pretty homemade, but delicious. I love them. Okay, the tacos, let's go for it. These are some girthy boys, so let's just give one big ass bite and break it down scientifically what makes it delicious or not delicious. Holy crap, that tastes so real. That tastes like meat meat. It's been five years since I've eaten any meat at all, so maybe I just forgot what meat tastes like, but dude. So Oliver Peck, the guy who founded this restaurant, did 415 tattoos in 24 hours of the letter 13. That's why he's in the world record book, but he also had a show. He's obviously a very entrepreneurial spirit. I also really appreciate the fact that Four Down Skate Park is a place that's close to here, and they have a poster on the front, a flyer for an event that they're having this Saturday day, which I probably will go to, maybe, most likely, depending on how my mental state is on that day. You know, I can never plan ahead. I'm gonna sit here and finish this meal. If I think of anything more clever to tell you, I will tell you, but for now, I'm just going to live in this little heaven. This spot is actually joining the Texas vegan movement, which is actually pretty huge right now. There's also Next Level Burger, which is making an appearance, but in Fort Worth and Dallas, etc., there are tons of all vegan restaurants, which is very exciting for a state that romanticizes barbecue so much. I'm just about to enter the last destination before we go back and try to finish that drawing to see how it actually turned out in the daytime. But this place is a little eerie. It's called the Texas Centen Centennial Art Deco Buildings. And listen to this explanation and tell me if you understand what's happening. A Texanic, AKA gigantic Texas collection of Art Deco architecture at Dallas Historic Fair Park. I'm starting to understand it. In 1936, to celebrate the 100 year anniversary of gaining independence from Mexico, the governor of Texas at the time wanted a gigantic affair. More than 50 Art Deco style buildings were constructed for the Texas Centennial Exposition World's Fair located here, like where I'm at right now. No one's following me, so I think I'm allowed to be where I am right now. Whoa, whoa. The first place I found is this science place. It's it's two, so if the buildings have a number order, that would be easy to follow, but it feels like it's not even open. I'm gonna try to open the door, but I'm not trying to like explore all the inside of these buildings too. That seems like too much work. It smells like people haven't been in there in a long time, like under construction, basically. I love that this is a museum for children and I tried following what was happening here, like the water going down in these funnels. And I was like, yes, of course, as an adult, I know that now there are rocks here. And um, 
yeah, I'm not following what's going on because I um, I smart. But these places are obviously open. I look at this museum, the doors are open. There are kids going inside. Oh my God, this is actually so cool what I'm looking at right now. I never knew that I wanted to know what it was like to be inside the innards of a dinosaur's intestines. But this is actually what it feels like. It's like a swampy vibe, but then just the architecture alone is so Cool, just like all these things kind of streaming here and there. And there's also another area over there that's similar. And it kind of looks like like skate ramps. <laughs> I just found myself a big ass elephant, uh, the trunks. If I wanted to, I could grind these, but I'm not that much of a douche wiener. This is crazy. I'm getting under the belly of the beast. I'm walking on his trunk. I am about to hit my head on his urethra. Somebody wax this, skaters have been here. This is lovely. I love the way this aesthetic is right here. It really lives in its own world. And then you kind of turn around and you're like, oh, immersion destroyed. But I love, look at this windmill. I say we look at one more building. I feel like we've gotten the gist of what's going on and maybe we'll come back another time and explore the rest. But over there, that building, because it looks like there is a juicy stair set in the front actually for skateboarding. Good Lord, this place is psychotic. Look how huge this one building is to show some art de deco deco this is so elaborate it's like the size of the white house and it's just sitting here in dallas texas pretty much there's no one around hello yeah no one around at all and it just exists here so the guy who designed this place was only 41 at the time his last name was doll that's what he went by and he hired 130 of the architects responsible for the new york world's fair in 1939 and he had a 25 million dollar budget and this is again in 1933 so that went a pretty long way over the years the fair park demolition proposals came and went meanwhile aging buildings needed repairs officials patched painted and sandblasted, obscuring original details, covering murals, and nearly destroying relief sculptures. The biggest loss came in 1942 when fire destroyed its largest exhibit building, the Hall of Varied Industries. It is a cool thing because architecture like this is rare nowadays. It's Art Deco, 1930 type modern style. So you get a blast in the past, but also Dallas voters approved $50 million in improvements, and the city right now is reviewing proposals for private groups to take over the fair park's operations, which, you know, it's this is gonna take a while. The idea is to reinvigorate the feeling that existed in 1936 when this place was first built, which I can imagine was probably a very monumental moment in Texas history. So I just texted my fiance who's from this area, and she said during the state fair, it completely fills up. So sometimes in the year, this place is packed. So this is where they hold certain events where it gets completely, you know, flustered with people. But it's kind of cool that you can just explore it on off days like today, where you're the only one around in 50 different buildings in this giant, giant area. I like stuff like this. What an amazing day so far. We have one more thing left on our list, but we have conquered the Amazon skateboard, AKA destroyed a terrible skateboard. We explored a new skate park in East Dallas. We went to Deep Ellum for the first time, checked out a banging vegan restaurant, also checking out Centennial art deco i can't wait to come back here and see more. i hope you enjoyed today's videos i don't want to end this with too much babbling i just want to say thank you for watching had a great day today lots of fun i appreciate all of you being here watching the content and i will see you every tuesday and thursday for a new video on this channel and a third video on my second channel so links in the description check out keep up let's do this have fun life okay take care progress daily and keep killing it <laughs>